Mustafa Tarab, you are the chairman and chief executive officer of OCP, which I suppose is the world's biggest phosphate producer. So you have a real role in food security, and you've just been chairing a panel, uh, a roundtable on food security. What is the connection between food security and good governance? Mm. Uh, OCP is the largest exporter, not the largest producer. Uh, uh, the connection is, uh, is e easy to fathom when one realizes that uh, the, we would need to feed the, the planet, we need to feed 9 billion people in about uh, 2050 uh, with uh, very little growth in, uh, in arable land. That means there are two, only one solution is to increase the productivity of the same, same pieces and surface of land that can only happen with technology and fertilizer. Now fertilizers uh, are going to have to be used uh, more extensively and hopefully more reasonably and more responsibly. Uh, but it is, uh, we are doing a lot of R&D in that sense. Uh, and the link between phosphate and fertilizer is that fertilizer are made of three basic nutrients, potash, nitrogen and phosphate. Given the news of uh, the last year, is there a connection between food security and the Arab Spring or the Arab Awakening? I mean, I'm going back, not just the Arab Spring, but you can go back to food riots in various developing countries, including, of course, in Egypt not so long ago. Mm. Is there a connection there? I think there is a connection. It started, uh, <coughs> if only symbolic, but I think it is more than symbolic since it started in, uh, in Tunisia with, uh, if I recall, uh, uh, the, inc the accident of the gentlemen uh, who, who were selling food, if I'm not mistaken. But I think the, 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 the connection is with food prices and, and, and probably uh, with the volatility of food prices more than the level of food prices. When you can have uh, economists on both sides of the equation, are food prices too high today uh, and something that they were too low yesterday? Uh, you know, let's keep in mind that there is also the small farmer uh, that benefits for, from high food prices on the other end of the occasion. I think the, there is a connection, uh, but I think it has more to do with volatility than the level of prices. Just a final question. Um, and the Arab Spring, the Arab Awakening, whatever one wants to call it, mm -hmm. is obviously a historical phenomenon of great importance. How do you think it's going to evolve? How do you see the Arab world from Morocco all the way across mm -hmm. to Iraq in, well, five years' time, ten years' time? Mm -hmm. Well, one would have to use a crystal ball to, to answer your question. The same crystal ball that could have been used to actually forecast the Arab Spring. As you recall, nobody forecast it. So I, well, I think I would have... They did, but they just didn't know when. It's like saying, you know, it, it will rain. Mm -hmm. But we don't know whether it will rain tomorrow or mm -hmm. ten, ten days ago or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, I'm an optimist. I think that the, uh, the, the, the Arab Spring uh, will lead, and it is already the case in many countries, including Morocco, to a, a more de democratic and open system uh, and more representation from the, from the people. So I'm an optimistic and I'm an optimist. I look at the long term. This is good for the Arab world and for the, the planet in general in the long term. Excellent. Mr. Tarab, thank you very much indeed. Thank you, sir. Shukran. Shukran.